Well, good morning, church. It's great to be with you on this Apple Fest Sunday. I see that you were able to get through and come to church, and we're welcoming you here. We hope that this is a great experience for you. We've been praying for you, and we pray that the Spirit will come down upon us today and give us worship. And with that said, let me introduce to you my friend Jim Anderson, who is our liturgist today. Good morning. We have a few announcements, one being Supper Club coming up on the 23rd, excuse me, the 22nd. Uh, it's at uh, El Toro's in Cranberry, and Ron and Trish Beers are responsible, so you can either sign, sign up in the back or uh, see them. I also take note of the various committee meetings coming up both this week and next week, circle meetings, etc. Also, the United Methodist women have their nut sales, so guys look out, I think they're trying to sell us. <laughs> and we need to move on with our first opening hymn. Although we're few in numbers today, let's make a noise so everybody outside can hear us. You are my vision. It's on the screens. Worship this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of God's benefits. The Lord forgives all our iniquity and heals all our diseases. 
The Lord redeems our lives from the pit and crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. God satisfies us with good as long as we live, so that our youth is moved like angels. Please be seated. And now, Temple Choir, with their anthem, For All That You Are. this morning with some of the folks in the choir and the praise band to start off Apple Fest Sunday um, in the park and it was a real blessing and I thank you for the work that was done for that. Um, why don't we invite the kids up and Ashley for the children's moment. Well good morning everyone. How are you today? Good. What, what is this? Huh. Look at this. This envelope must have been left here for someone special. Hmm. Ooh, smells pretty. Hmm. Must be a love letter. What do you think it's for? Well, see, you know, when someone is in love, they will give someone all kinds of gifts and cards to their sweetie pie. That's right. You know why? Because in 1 Corinthians 13, 5, 
it says that love is not selfish. Now, that means that if you love someone, you'll find it easy to give gifts and time and all kinds of things to the person that you love. Should we read the letter? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. It says, Dear Honey Bunny, Oh, how I miss you. When I see you next, I'm going to kiss you. Hugs and kisses. XO, XO. What do you think of that? All right, well, obviously, whoever wrote this letter is willing to give something to his or her honey bunny. Now, you know, God loves us so much that he gave all that he had to us in his son, Jesus. You get that? He gave everything he had to us. Now, we say that we love God. Now, if we really do love God, we will also gladly give to God. Now, we will give us, give God our tithes and offerings. Now, you guys have seen this little envelope. Now, sometimes the way that we can show God we love him is by giving him things part of us, part of our, our money, so that we can support his, his, you know, support his work and support his church. Um, now, let's think of that offering envelope as an env envelope that we can use to send our love to God, just like the person sent their love to their honey bunny. <laughs> All right, why don't we go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the ability to show us that that we love you um, in so many different ways. Um, we ask that we would be giving and we would, would share what you give us so graciously, Father. In your name I pray, amen. All right, well, since today is Children's Sabbath, we actually have something prepared for you guys. So we're going to switch places here, and it's time to sing. All right, go ahead. You guys stomp your feet like that? Now let's clap together. That's it. Keep it going. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. called clapping on the back of me. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.
Well, it's good to be with you once again on this Sunday. We have a, a scripture passage that is a little bit long today. It's extra long. It's longer than it usually is. And Sally ends up being the lucky dog to, 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 to read it. Um, <laughs> but um, so um, let me introduce to you my friend Sally Richards, uh, Bartram Richards, uh, or Richards Bartram, um, uh, to... Um, to, go to, church here. <laughs> to go to um, to go to the Lord in in Scripture, but let let's um, have a word of prayer before Sally reads. Um, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we could get together and 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 worship you. I thank you for my friend Sally who is reading Scripture today, and we pray pray as we prepare to hear this word um, today that you would prepare our hearts for what you have to say to us. Um, we pray this in your name. Amen. So you may want to pull it out of your bulletin th- today and read along with Sally because it is kind of long. Our scripture reading today is from First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 through 22. King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great. For the temple will not be for mortals, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God, so far as I was able, the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, besides great quantities of onyx and stones for setting, antimony, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones, and marble in abundance. Moreover, in addition to all that I have provided for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own gold and silver, and because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for overlaying the walls of the house. And for all the work to be done by artisans, gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver, who then will offer willingly, consecrating themselves today to the Lord? Then the leaders of ancestral houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the thousands and of the hundreds, and the officers over the king's work. They gave for the service of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 darics of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord, into the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because these had given willingly, for with single mind they had offered freely to the Lord. King David also rejoiced greatly. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted and head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to make this freewill offering? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. For we are aliens and transients before you, as were all our ancestors. Our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. I know, my God, that you search the heart and take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart I have freely offered all these things. And now I have seen your people, who are present here, offering freely and joyously to you. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our ancestors, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people, and direct their hearts toward you. Grant to my son Solomon that with single mind he may keep your commandments, your decrees, and your statutes, performing all of them, and that he may build the temple for which I have made provision." Then David said to the whole assembly, Bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the king. 
On the next day, they offered sacrifices and burnt offerings to the Lord, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their libations and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great joy. They made David's son Solomon king a second time. They anointed him as the Lord's prince and Zadok as priest. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Sally. This is the second sermon that we're giving on uh, giving. Uh, we're looking at giving, the issue of giving for the month of October. Let me start off with this. Uh, a, a mother wanted to teach a, her daughter uh, a moral lesson. So she gave her, her daughter, her little girl, a quarter and a dollar for church. And she said, Put whichever you want in the offering plate and keep the other for yourself. And when they were leaving the church, the mother asked the daughter which amount she had given. Well, said the little girl, I was going to give the dollar, but just before the collection, the man in the pulpit said that we should all be a cheerful giver. I knew I'd be a lot more cheerful if I gave the quarter. So I did. It is like that, is it not? We think that money will make us happier, and we tend to think that we'll be happier if we have more money. Now, I have a friend that passed away this year. He was a, a man who had inherited a great deal of money, and he was also a doctor, so he, had a, he was a man of means. And he said one time that if people had what he had, they would realize, too, that money does not make you happy. And that is how we give a lot of times, by what we believe. Do we believe that money makes us happy? This little girl in my story believed that money would make her happier if she gave the quarter and kept the dollar. I hope you were able to, to read the passage that Sally read today. Um, that you were able to follow the passage. Uh, it is rather long, um, but just in case, it's in the bulletin, and you, you might want to take it out as we look at it this morning. You can see that in this passage that David led the people to believe in what they were giving to. David believed that God deserved the temple. If you would go back and look at the Scriptures before this passage, you would see that God did not let the, David build the, the temple at first. For if you look at uh, 1 Chronicles 28.3, it reads like this, But God said to me, to David, You shall not build a house for my name, for you are a warrior and have shed blood. But David believed that God deserved a temple. So he dedicated his own wealth to it. And his vision catches on, and it's infectious. It is so infectious that other leaders in the church give to, or other leaders give to the cause. Look at this passage from um, Chronicles 29, 6. It says, Then the leaders of the ancestral houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the thousands and of the hundreds, and the officers over the king's work. See, therefore, then the people started giving freely um, and wholeheartedly. They followed these leaders. For we see in, in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 29, verse 9, it reads, Then the people rejoiced because they had given freely and willingly. For with single mind they had offered freely to the to Lord, King David also rejoiced greatly. And then, for the next 350 years, this temple that they built shone like the golden sun because of the vision and the belief of these people. They gave and they built it because they believed in this vision. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a great celebration here in this church. We celebrated 100 years of 
being in this building. And, you know, we had some former pastors here, and they came back. And one of the guys that came back, one of the pastors, his name was Sammy Knappenberger. And many of you folks know who he is. He is in his 90s now, and he, was, he came to be here uh, to be pastor in 1960, before I was even around. Um, one, of the, one of my blessings on that Sunday where we celebrated this original building was that I sat around until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, long after everybody had left, listening to Sammy tell his stories. When he was here, he led a campaign to build the education wing onto this church. He had a vision for a place with more space. People were cramming into Sunday school rooms down in the kitchen, and he wanted some place more for the people. At the time, Franklin was a different place. There was a bigger population in the town. And you know what? This church was the big church in town. Sammy told me how he went to people of means and asked them to give to the project. And then some people of this church told me that Sammy was so good at that kind of thing that they, had, they paid off the education wing in no time. And look around you this morning. This place is beautiful. You know, they wouldn't build a church today, but the folks in 1900, in the early 1900s, had a vision and thought God deserved such a place as this. And now the people in 2016, we take care of such a vision. But that is what we do, right? We care for the vision so we can carry on. But we now have a kingdom vision. We know, we know from who we are that we have a kingdom vision, and we know that the people out there need God. We even have people this morning outside showing an act of kindness, giving out donuts and coffee so that we can at least show them God's love. We have people this morning give because they have a kingdom vision. And that is why we are sharing in this series of sermons on giving. You know, you may know uh, a guy, uh, a comedian from back in the 70s named Flip Wilson. He was popular. And one of the characters that he did a lot of times on his show was a preacher. And his church was the church of what's happening now, if you remember that. And Flip did a skit one time where, where he was the pastor and he told um, his congregation, he'd shout out, if this church is going to serve God, it's going to have to get on its knees and crawl. And the congregation yelled back, make it crawl, preacher, make it crawl. And then he says, and once the church has learned to crawl, it's got to get up on its feet and walk. The congregation says, make it walk, preacher, make it walk. And then he says, and once the church has, has learned to walk, it's got to begin to learn to run. The congregation says, Make it run, preacher. Make it run. And then he says, and in order to run, it's got to reach deep down into the pockets and learn to give. And the congregation is quiet. And then they say, make it crawl, preacher. Make it crawl. You know, a church cannot grow if it doesn't give. And if it doesn't grow, it will crawl. Now, hopefully... You don't, you, don't, you don't just give to the church so the doors stay open, or you don't give to the church so this could become the church again in town. Hopefully, you give to God to glorify him and, and to build up his kingdom. Hopefully, you give with a vision that God is going to do something special because of your faithfulness. We don't want to just be known as the church that gives out donuts. We want to be a church that is about the kingdom. But donuts is a great way to start, don't you think? Did you see that David started by being an inspiring um, inspiration? Um, he 
started by inspiring people by being an example. He said, this is what I am giving, and then the people followed by example. He set the pattern. You know, last week I challenged you to think about giving a tithe at least one Sunday um, during the month of October. A tithe of the, is a tenth percent, ten percent of your, what you earn as a living. And if you are here for Apple Fest and you're visiting, try it at, the, um, at your church at home. You know, I have committed to the tithe. As I try to tithe, um, sometimes I have to go back to Lisa, our finance director, and say, am I right on track? Am I, am I behind? Do I need to catch up? And then I'll, I'll get caught up. And, you know, she'd do the same for any of us here. Am I up to date? Am I giving to the vision for the kingdom of God? making disciples. Now, I don't tell you about my attempt to tithe to brag, but if your leaders don't tithe, why should you? And if we don't both tithe, we will close our doors and sadly won't be a vision for the kingdom anymore. In the passage we read from Second Chronicles this morning, David says something else about belief. He prays. And in this prayer, he acknowledged that there were, they were giving to God and to the temple because they believed that God would supply. Now, there are many more scriptures that, that talk about this, that speak this truth. We looked at one last week, and we'll look at it in the weeks to come. It is from Malachi 3.10. Um, it reads like this, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And thus put me to test, says the Lord of hosts. See if you do not, if I will not pour, see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. This is an agreement with uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6, which reads like this. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seeks him. You know, faith is important in all areas of our life, especially in our giving. Do we believe that God will reward us in our giving? And the question is also... What do we believe is a reward? Is it a reward for you to know that we have freely given out coffee and donuts to those who walk by our church this Apple Fest morning? For those of us who have given to that, um, feel a blessing. Do you feel it is a reward that we now have lifts in our church to get people in and out to help the disabled be able to worship with us or get to our activities? And you know what? We've been using them a lot, too. You know, I have never been a rich person, <laughs> and I probably never will be. And you know what? I'm totally okay with that. But I have been a poor person, a very poor person financially. And if I had not had the parents that I have to help me through those times, I probably wouldn't be here or where I am today. But one thing... I have always tried to do was give. And I most of the time tithed. And you know what? It never made things worse for me financially. It does not say in Scripture, folks, that the financially okay or the rich will give. It does, however, say that the believer will and will give to the, the kingdom of God so the work can be done. So, the question this morning then becomes, do you, like David, believe? Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about the whole idea of giving, we ask that you would continue to bless us. We ask that you would give us the belief 
in you that is so empowering to our life that we have to give to that cause. I thank you for the folks in our church, and I thank you for the way we are able to do ministry. And we just pray this in your most blessed name. Amen. Let's sing together the, the next hymn, which is For the Beauty of the Earth, number 92. scripture passage, you'll see these folks that we're praying for on a regular basis. Let me add a few things on to that this morning. We want to continue, we want to pray for um, our friend Doc Fee, um, who is struggling with, um, Jeremy tells me, an infection in his, his foot, his ankle. Um, so, and he's been on crutches and stuff, so we can be praying for him. He cares for all of us around here, a lot of us anyway. Um, and we can be pr praying for him um, to, to be able to get better because I'm sure that's not sitting well with him to, to not being as mobile as he usually is. Um, we also want to lift up a, a praise this morning. Um, we have somebody who's celebrating a, a milestone birthday. I'm not going to say what birthday it is. Um, but Kelly Nydick is celebrating her birthday today. So can we sing happy birthday to Kelly? Jeremy? Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kelly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Kelly. Any other prayer concerns this morning that we need to lift up? Well, we see we have some guests that are Apple Fest people and, uh, and some new folks today. We want to make you feel welcome here, and we're, we're glad to have you here. Um, make sure that you signed your um, pew pads and let us know who you are, because we do have something we want to send to you, but we're grateful that you're here today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, uh, as we think about uh, the whole aspect of giving, we want to thank you and are so grateful for the way that you gave your son for us. There is no way that we could ever even think about repaying for that gift, and we thank you for your grace. For we know that Jesus came for us at a time that we were sinners and not good people, but he came for us in the midst of our depravity and our sin and our brokenness. Lord God, we thank you for the kingdom. We thank you for the way it's around us and the way that it's yet to come. We thank you for the way that we can show your kingdom through the way that we live our lives, and we pray that you would lead us to live those kind of lives, Lord. Walk with us and teach us. Give us a good examples, of God. And as we pray this morning, we think about those folks who are out on the street um, celebrating Apple Fest, and we pray that we would be able to share you with, with them. We thank you for those folks who are out there serving coffee and donuts to them this morning, and we pray that um, that would show them your light. And Lord, as we celebrate this morning, we we want to lift up those folks that are on our hearts. We want to pray for Doc Fee this morning. We pray for a healing there. We pray for those who are recovering from losses and for those who are sick and fighting cancer and those who are not able to be here with us. We also thank you for great things like birthdays, and we, we thank you for Kelly and for her life today, and we celebrate that with her today. And we pray for many more years to come. And Lord, we want to lift up ourselves to you too. And we lift ourselves up to you as an offering. Use us, God. Help us to be the people that you want us to be. And with that saying, we want to pray the prayer this morning that you taught us so long ago. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts this morning for the morning offering.
use to share your kingdom with our world. Bless us in the midst of that, Lord, and, and lead us into paths of righteousness. And we pray this in your name. Amen. you to fellowship around the donut table outside today, but let's go forth in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, with the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen.